Now what we're going to focus on, if you've ever been involved in a social casino product, you probably have seen some patterns that uh, everyone seems to make just before they, 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 uh, they fail. Uh, and so we're going to talk about five of the key reasons why social startups fail. And for that, Guy, ha Guy Hassan is going to join us on stage and tell us a little bit about his experience. Guy? Thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, like I said, my name is Guy Hassan, and let me introduce myself for a second. I come from, I started working in this area, in this field, in Playtech. Uh, I wrote specs for about for more than 80 uh, slot games, and then I moved on to Playtica, where I was the content manager, responsible for creating the, uh, the slot games, uh, the content of the slot games for Slotomania and Caesars Casino, which was right before the big exit. Did about 40 uh, slot games. Then I moved on to advise and consult for companies about how to make the, um, the product more popular and more attentive and more successful. And I noticed I've worked for both veteran companies and new companies. And when working for new companies, I've found that new companies tend to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. Sometimes they, they have a product out, and it's professional, it looks, it has great design, it has great, uh, uh, they had great teams, it looks good, and no one is playing the game. People come, they play, they leave. So we're going to talk about getting it right. The major mistakes uh, new companies make, why and how to fix them. So let's start in the beginning. Social slots, a million dollar business. People want in, you guys with new companies want in. Is there room for new companies. There is room for new companies. I've heard people talk in this space, on this stage, for the last two days, again and again, about new companies that are starting that came out of nowhere. And there are also a few good companies coming in as well with great KPIs that haven't started marketing yet. So there is room, but if you're a new company, you have two big obstacles. One is user acquisition. User acquisition is super expensive today. A lot of new companies don't even start, even though they have all the right things set up in the beginning, because people are wary of investing when they know there's going to be so much money spent on user acquisition. The other one is, this is the big one, creating a product people don't want. How do you know if people, what people want and what people don't want? Consistently, despite anything you might hear, Social slot players have been acting the same way for the last few years. Players like the same elements, regardless of the country of origin. The same slot games that are popular in the US, are popular in Europe, South America, Australia, and so on. Uh, the same ones that are not popular are also not popular across the world. Graphic style. We tend to think a lot about graphic style and maybe this graphic style is the next hottest thing, but if you look at the top social companies, you'll see that there are many graphic styles. It isn't any type of graphic style that will get you to win. People like the content of the slots themselves. And also the company doesn't matter. Slot, uh, Playtica did uh, release a couple of uh, uh, games that didn't work, even though they're Playtica. Uh, if you give players what they want, you, give, you get popular. So new companies, like we talked about, uh, can win. And old companies, if they get products that people don't want, will not win. <coughs> so if you give the players what they like, your game is popular. If you don't give them what they like, your game fails. How do you know what players don't like? A slot player's mind works differently than a gamer's mind. The, thi the same thing that works, that makes uh, uh, um, forgot, uh, Candy, Candy Crush popular, or the same thing that makes uh, Temple Run popular, the same thing that makes anything that is in a social slot popular is the opposite of what makes a social slot popular. It is the opposite. So we have to realize there's a difference. Since most of the people who set up new social slot companies and also social slot companies are not actually addicted to social slots, they're not addicts, uh, they have the wrong mindset. 
Uh, if you have the wrong mindset, you have false assumptions, you stick to those assumptions, and false assumptions destroy slots, even those created by the best teams. As we'll see, it's not the best team that makes uh, a slot good. So when you leave here today, in 10 or 15 minutes, you will know 99% of the false assumptions that kill new uh, social slots. False assumption one, players play to win. In Candy Crush, in any other game, players play to win. In social slots, players play to lose. What they want is not to win. New companies think, start a game and think, we're going to shout people want to win. They say they want to win. They want to win money when playing, like fake money, when playing social slots. But uh, when, you, so when they start a game, they throw lots of bonuses at you, take some cash, they give you RTP that's greater than 100% just so the players will feel good and don't feel losses, because losses makes people, make people feel bad. But what happens is they like winning, they play the game for the day, and the next day, they go and find another company that gives them the experience they want. They want to lose. If you listen good, if you listen well to, uh, to the most common complaints when, you, when uh, social companies release uh, a new slot game, people write in and say, uh, I bought, you know, I spent $100 and got so-and-so coins and I expected to lose my money in two days and I lost my money in four days, in four hours, you suck. What they're actually saying is they expected to lose the money. They spent a lot of money and they expected to lose the fake money that they got in return. The fact that they spent it, the loss in four hours doesn't mean they won't come back. They will come back. So players expect to lose, losing is part of the game. You don't give them a loss, you, you don't give them the experience they want, they will not stick around. So actionable tip number one, use an RTP that's lower than 100. The most uh, popular ones are 94% to 97 do Don't use a higher one than 98% because it starts feeling, statistically some people will feel it's a game that wins money. So, uh, that's action tip one. False assumption two, appealing to the wrong age groups. I've seen quite a few new social companies trying to appeal to 20-somethings to be cool and hip and, you know, and maybe add some games. But the truth is that teens and 20-somethings will never play your game. This is the game. You play spin, 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 spin. That's the game for seven hours, spin, spin. Do you imagine 20-somethings will do this for seven hours a day for months? No, there's nothing you can do to get them to play the game for a long time. They don't have lifetime value. They will maybe play it a little bit, but they, they, they won't stick around. So, assume your players are 65. They're younger than 65, they're older than 65, but if you try to hit 65, those are the players you want, and never create a game for players younger than 45. <coughs> if you want to do something about Beyonce in a social slot, that's not your, uh, uh, your demo, for example. Uh, false assumption uh, three, players want excitement. Everyone wants excitement, right? That's why you play games. But this is the game. Spin, spin, spin. That's the game. Spin for hours and weeks. And people actually take vacations off their work. Uh, when I was in uh, Platica, someone took a two-week vacation off her work and all she did was play Slotomania. So that's the game. Spin, 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 spin. Player, players want the zombie effect. You go in, you're, you're meditative, you know, you, become, you go into a meditative zone, uh, and that's your fun. You sink in, and that's it. Anything you do to take a person out of the zombie zone, out of the zombie effect, you lose players on the way. People, People enjoy it less. They remember they have emails, people to talk to, you know, texts to return. You take them out of the zombie effect. Uh, that's what happens. So uh, never add non-slot gamification. If you take someone out of the slot game to add something new, to add something special, to add some kind of gamification that doesn't have to do with the slot game, you will lose people on the way. People play slot games to play slot games and to lose themselves into the zombie zone. And never add another type of game. 
So false assumption four, it's okay to create cheats. A lot of companies do this or want to do this. What is cheats? Creating different maths for different situations. For example, uh, you've got new players versus old players, like giving a high RTP to new players and a worst RTP to people that stuck around for two weeks. This is a no-no. Paying players versus non-paying players, like doing a special math for people who pay to get them to pay more, getting a special kind of math to people that haven't played to get them to play more or try to pay for the first time. Again, I know, no, players with many coins versus players with less coins. Many companies that try started with a really high RTP now have players that have billions and trillions of coins and they can't lose the coins even with a negative RTP over any kind of time, so they don't actually need to pay. And they asked me, uh, should we do really bad math for those people so they can lose their money? And the answer is no. Why not? Players already assume you cheat. This is a luck game. This is a gambler's mind. When you have a positive, uh, a positive streak and then a negative streak, people assume that you have an algorithm that people with a positive streak then get a negative streak. Uh, when you don't have a positive streak and you don't have big wins for a long time, people assume that something about them and their data that makes you a single them out for bad luck. People assume you cheat. And when you do cheat, they will talk, because people today talk in forums and groups, and they leave. Because you have shown to be completely untrustworthy, and the thing about slot games is that you have to employ true randomness always for everyone. Luck has to be the same for everyone. New players, old players, people with money, people without money, and people then enjoy getting good luck and get pissed off when they have bad luck and then they pay so they can have good luck. False assumption five, players want a professional game. We all come from an entrepreneurial uh, kind of mindset where we want to create a professional looking game. But players don't need professionalism to like the game or to pay you. Who needs professionalism? You need professionalism. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel good when you talk to your, fr to your entrepreneur, entrepreneur friends and they say, wow, this is a good-looking game, as opposed to, wow, your game looks like, you know. Um, so, a poor-looking game is not a factor in success. In fact, a dirty slot may work in your favor because players, uh, players already feel inside that a slot is kind of dirty. So when the slot actually looks dirty, that works in your favor because that's what a slot should be. And even games like uh, Slotomania, when they started, um, it started out much more dirtier than it is today. There were spelling mistakes, bugs, animation mistakes, uh, and so on. And my favorite spelling mistake in Slotomania is, was in the second game, which is now gone. In the bonus, you had to shoot with a cannon, you had to shoot a king with a cannon, and it, it should have said, blow up the king, but it said, blow the king. And for months, that's what it said. No one said anything, no one, you know, anyway. Didn't make Slotomania any less popular in the beginning. So actionable tip number five, do not let perfectionism bug down your work. Many people spend weeks and months of work to fix, to make the graphics just great, uh, to make animations just great, these are not the things that get you money. So you spend a lot of money on the things that don't get you money. And that's a mistake. People do it all the time. I never mistake a poor looking slot for a good slot. Just because it looks good doesn't mean it is good. And the opposite is true too. So you now know 99% of the false assumptions that kill social slots, they are Players play to win, they don't, they play to lose. Young players will play the game, they won't, you can actually monetize them. Players want excitement, they don't, they want the zombie effect. It's okay to create cheats, it is never okay to create cheats, it's one of the basic rules of slot games. Players want professionalism, they do not want professionalism, they want a fun slot. They don't need it, you need it. Now, here's a bonus. Remember I said that win, winning, players don't play to win, they play to lose. But they really like winning. They like winning in a game where they lose. So the more you give them an experience that they want something, 
the more they get that hit in their mind, like a drug, that they want something, the more they stick around. So how do you do that? Uh, these are three more ways an addict's brain is different. One is when you have a win smaller than a bet, you get, they feel like it's a win bigger than a bet. Let me tell you a story uh, you can maybe connect with. I talked to my mother-in-law a few months ago, and she said she plays the lottery uh, every week. And I said, well, you can just take your money and throw it in the garbage. And she said, no, no, last week I won five euros. And I said, but how much did the ticket cost? She said, 15 euros. But she won. She won. She didn't lose 10 euros. She won 5 euros. That's the gambler's mind. Winning half your bet is winning. It doesn't make sense, but that's how you get that drug in their mind, okay? Two, an almost win equals a win in their mind. So if you have, say, a jackpot that needs five symbols, well, for you it's like it's five symbols in a row, for example, and you get four, you feel you won because you almost won. So if you've got two scatters that give you or two symbols, and if you have a third one to appear on the reels and you get free spins or you get a bonus, then you, you know the reel spin, that's why it does that, because you, to make you see that you're almost winning, and then you don't win, but you feel you won. That's another cheat for us. Uh, saying you win is also as good as a win. So when people get, you're enjoying this. So when people, uh, when, uh, when people, when you get free spins, you don't say, you don't just start the free spins automatically. You don't say your 10 free spins are starting. You say you won 10 free spins, and then you have to have them acknowledge it by clicking start to see that they saw it. You won 10 free spins. When you finish, you won 50,000 coins in 10 free spins. They won the coins, and they won the free spins. If they don't win anything in free spins, you won 10 free spins. It's still a win. When you start a bonus, you won the so-and-so bonus. When you finish, uh, then you won 50,000 coins in the so-and-so bonus. Saying you win is the same as a win. So now you have what you need to get over the major obstacle that blocks new companies. Questions? <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Yes. <coughs> so a lot of people that you, that you talk to in the business, you're telling them things that they don't really want to hear, right? They 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 want to make a game that's sexy, professional. That. How, how do you uh, how do you convince them that these are, are are true facts? Actually, it's from my experience when they hear it for the first time, they go like, "Do right." Because it sounds true, they realize why it doesn't work, and then, uh, uh, and then they believe it. It just—it sounds right. It's counterintuitive, but it's right. Any other questions from the audience? Yeah. Casey, oh, bring mic. Oh, sorry, we need to get it on video. Oh, uh, does number of slots in game really matters, and how it uh, improves? Uh, Monetization. I didn't hear. What uh, you said. Number of slots in game, like ten slots, twenty slots. How many w slots when do you, you need when to you launch improve? slot game? How many slots do you need to launch with? Yeah. Um, well, it's like this: the more slots you launch with, the greater the chance of monetization. But maybe you launch with the wrong slots. Maybe you did something wrong. Maybe your graphics are wrong. Maybe your math is wrong. So it would be too much work to launch with 15 slots or even 10 slots unless you're 100% sure that you know what you're doing. Also, you want to monetize. All this is costing you money. So I think the minimum number of slots you can launch with is six. And it's safe. It's completely safe to launch with six. And then you know people know you're going to, if you have a really great product, they'll stick around. And you have to keep on giving new ones. Launching with 10 is better. You know. Questions? I, I have a, a question if no one else does. So I, I've actually funded a few social uh, uh, social casino game startups, um, and it's interesting. We've never achieved critical mass with any of them, and I think we've actually been guilty of all five of the sins <laughs> that you listed. Um, and, and so, you know, <coughs> you mentioned one thing, which was never to really break the slot cycle. Once somebody's a zombie and they're in the slot cycle mentality, 
not to uh, not not to break away and have a different type of game. But uh, a lot of companies spend so much time on their bonus game uh, mechanics, and and so would you consider that to be in line with the with the slot game still because the user's not leaving it or? Well, let's start with the fact that doing a lot of complicated things in the bonus costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time, and you would do just as well with a small bonus. So that's not the thing that monetizes you. But if you get to a certain point and you've got five bonuses, that's, that would, could be a really good game. But it's not the thing you need as a new company to monetize. And it is a problem. Bonus games are a problem. People like bonus, bonus games. It also takes them out of the zombie effect. So there is friction in that. And there have been games, more recently, more games, that give you no bonus and that are super popular because they make up for it with the right math. So if the math uh, uh, makes up for the fact that you have no bonus, you don't need a bonus. So make, if you're in your company, make really simple bonuses. And if you're not making bonuses, make sure you have the right math. Uh, any other questions? OK, thank you very much, guys. Great, thank, thank you. you so much, guys.